In this question, the only important thing that I noticed was that they tell us that Q1 is equal to Q2. So these two angles are the same. And then everything else they have given us. The first question asks us to determine the value of Q1. So some students might try use tan chord over here, but remember that this line is not a tangent. But instead, can you see the cyclic quadrilateral PQNS? Well, what we should identify is this angle here, S1, is the exterior angle. Now we know that if you have a cyclic quadrilateral and you have an exterior angle, that exterior angle is always going to be the same as the interior opposite angle. So that means that this angle S1 is going to be the same as the whole of angle Q. They are going to be the same as each other. So we can say that angle S1 is going to be the whole of Q. So we can say NQP, NQP, and that's just because of exterior angle of a cyclic quad. Now we also know that these two are the same, so therefore we can say that Q1 will be equal to 48 degrees divided by 2, which is 24 degrees. So I'm going to fill that in now. Both of these are 24. The next question asks for angle R. So that's this one over here. Now immediately, I saw a bow tie looking shape. So if you ever have a bow tie shape, like that for example, then the top angles are always the same and these bottom corner angles are always the same. If it has this shape instead, then these two are the same and these two corners are the same. So if we look at our bow tie, we would be able to see that these two should be the same. And so angle R must be 24 degrees. Now, of course, the reason is not bow tie. The reason is angles in the same segment. The next one is to calculate M one, which is this angle over here. Now for that we could just use the parallel lines where we could realize that this angle and this angle are corresponding. So we could say that angle M1 is going to be equal to 48 degrees because of corresponding angles because the line QP is parallel to the line RS. And the last question Prove that ST, which is this line, is a tangent to the circle passing through M, N, and S. So we have to try draw a little circle for ourselves. So it would look something like that, and they want ST to be a tangent. Now my advice is whenever they ask you a question like this, it's usually going to be converse tan chord theorem. So what you do is you look for the tangent, and then you look for a chord. So I'm going to use chord SN. Now, if that was a tangent, which angles would have to be the same? Well, you look at the angle in between the chord and the tangent, which is angle this 48 degree. And now we use our tan chord. So you put your finger on each side of the chord and you try to make your fingers come together somewhere in the circle. So if you go along this line, you can also go along this line, and so you would come together here at M1. So I'm just going to write something here for you guys. If it was a tangent, then S1 would be the same as M1. But we know that M1 is already equal to 48. Remember we proved that? And so therefore, S1 is equal to M1. So this means that this must be a tangent. So therefore, ST is a tangent because of the converse, which means the opposite of the tan chord theorem. And that's how you would do that.